Apa khabar kami di Sarawak untuk kami anak Sarawak? Saya berada di Sarawak di Kuching sekarang ni. Ini Taman Sahabat. Memang suasana di Sarawak memang cukup cukup istimewa. Anda boleh lihat kepelbagaian di pagi hari. Tetapi sebelum matahari terbit pun memang akan ada seorang pemimpin yang cukup berwibawa Sarawak sudah pun melakukan kegiatan riadah di sini dan Timbalan Ketua Menteri yang cukup hebat Datuk Ahmad Douglas. Terima kasih meluangkan masa bersama saya. Terima kasih. Uh, what why why do you choose Taman Sahabat and what's your ritual? Is this your secret of longevity and also political leadership? <laughs> uh, I choose this Taman Sahabat because it's very near to my home. And it's one of the safest place. Uh, sometimes I walk in the morning and Saturday there's a shopping area okay. the other side. But there is no fence and so on. So sometimes it's a risky uh, with dogs around. Uh, so I come here every, most of the morning around 5.30 uh, because I have to go to office around finish my office around 8.30. I, I got to make sure that there's enough time uh, to relax and to do exercise. Dato' Amar, you've been a politician for a considerable amount of time. So you, you know everything almost, uh, I would say, about what needs to know. But many people don't realize that it's the older politicians that work the hardest. Because if we look at the national level, and now when we look at Sarawak, if you start your exercise routine at 5.30, you cannot wake up at 5.25. <laughs> so meaning you've been awake for a considerable time before that. But we know at the position of Deputy Chief Minister, you won't be able to go back home at 7 or 8 p.m. and rest also. So what's the hours like? Maybe you sleep two, three, four hours only? Oh, yeah, that's where I learned from some of the leaders. Some leaders have this 10-minute uh, nap in the office or five minutes just to have complete rest. At night, uh, because there are so many issues and so on and so forth. Uh, I normally sleep about three to four hours uh, intermittent sleep. Mm -hmm. And by five o'clock, I should be awake. And that's where my routine begins. I need exercise. You know, I'm, I joined politics in 1977 yep. as political secretary until today. It's a long journey. And uh, I also feel old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need to make sure that my system, especially my way I handle situation, my faculty of thinking, uh, keep fit. Is it a good de-stressor? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, it relaxes your muscle, and then you sweat. At the same time, you know, this environment is a very uh, conducive environment. Yes. You can stop and look at the fish. Uh, it's a very relaxing. You've been in uh, Semenanjung for a long time in your career. Uh, how do you compare the early morning sunrise there and the early morning sunrise here? Because, you know, the early birds always get the worm. So how do you compare both sides of uh, the South China Sea? Uh, if you go to this uh, Taman near uh, Parliament, eh? Then, you get, uh, then that gives you this, this type of environment with the people, with the trees, and uh, not so much of... Uh, but to get there, Correct. it's a challenge. If you go a wrong time, you'll be caught in, in the, the jam. jam. So that is already very, very stressful. But here, I just walk five minutes, walk here, and uh, the environment is very clean, the air is very fresh. So it's, it's that, that type of... Uh, uh, Absence of traffic jam, so much hassle. I think that's one of the big difference. And I think the sky and the air is clearer here. Uh, yeah, Kuching, <laughs> Kuching better than Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Kuala Lumpur is a bit, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's a polluted. I don't know whether I can keep up with you, but today, Kame Anak Sarawak will be with you in your exercise routine, right here in Taman Sahabat Kuching. But that's not, that's not all. <laughs> we also want to know 
after exercise you must replenish nutrition so what's the secret ingredient that keeps Dato Amang pumping at the heights of politics especially nowadays politics in Sarawak in Malaysia is very very colorful indeed so maybe Mikolo or you know Laksa Sarawak or whatever after that so I promise you we're going to exercise but after that we're going to sit down for more juicy details of top leadership of Kamek Anak Sarawak episode for this time with Dato Amang Daglin Anda masih menonton Kame Anak Sarawak khas tentang Sarawak di Astro Awani. Awani sentiasa sayangkan Sarawak dan kami harap Sarawak juga sayangkan Astro Awani. Terima kasih. Dan rakyat sayangkan pemimpin. Di Sarawak, pemimpin cukup dihormati dan pemimpin juga menghormati rakyat. That's why after Taman Sahabat Recreation and Exercise, Dato' Amar is here. This is the favorite hangout place in the morning for breakfast in this area. Uh, before I ask you the more bigger question, why do you like to eat here? Um, I've been, uh, I'm among the first settler in this uh, housing oh, estate in okay. 1982. All right. So these are among the new, this, this is the shop the other side. Okay. Among the, this also has been here. So, it's a friend, and this guy is from, the wife is from Batong, okay. but the food is not oily, so we, it's, it's familiarity. Okay. Dr. Amar, in all the things I've Googled about you, other politicians you spend a long time in Semenanjung, I asked them also about you, they all said you're very driven, and you're very different because of your background, and you always tell the story of where you come from, you might not be residing in Betong because you have to be here at the seat of power but every conversation they say that you have you will always be the Betong inside because you will always be talking about rural development rural development not for the sake of it but for the people that must also be included so what actually is the real driver between everything that you have done in your career from the 70s I was uh, born in the jungle to a poor family. There's no electricity, there's no water. My survival rate at the time was 50-50. There's no clinic. Uh, there's no road. When I go to school, I go to walk for a few hours. So when I have a chance to join politics, I make that as my mission. One, to fight poverty. Two, to make sure that the next generation doesn't have to go through what I've gone through. It's tough. That's why I have about 30 classmates. Most of them are dropped out. I was the only one that can reach the university because it was tough. So it became our mission to make sure that the rural Sarawak will be able to be developed together with the other region in Malaysia. Because if the rural Sarawak remain lagging in development, remain a uh, poverty-stricken area, that will not be good for the country economic development. So, um, uh, I just want to elucidate that point a bit because I've been here for quite some time. Thank you. The people from are very welcoming. Um, Sometimes it's so hard for the younger and more urban generation to see the intricacies of being in the rural area because they don't have that experience. So they generally people can think, especially on social media, if you're hardworking, then you can go out of poverty. But the kind of poverty you are referring to, which are you are cut off from the development, any tools of development because of geography itself. Imagine the only way out is going on the river and the river is not always the same. There are different tides of different monsoon and different stuff. And if you can link that, the fact of the geography 
end the extreme poverty because there's no way to get to a clinic, even if you are sick. Mm. And the modern population wouldn't be able to comprehend that. Can you give examples from your younger days? Yeah, age? yeah, but you see, I was talking to my children. My children were born in Kuching, have all the luxury of life. So, we keep reminding them, it is hard work, it is a, a continual struggle that keep us and that is still relevant to them, even though they are not caught within that uh, very difficult socio-economic condition. Uh, so that, really, they very difficult for them to understand. They say, oh, that is your time. But in Sarawak, we still have about 0.6% of incidence of poverty, and they are still isolated area uh, outside like uh, the interior Baram, interior uh, Rajang, yeah. and then... Uh, but for my area, Betong, we are a bit fortunate. So we are in the center, and we've been working very hard with... Uh, last time, the uh, elected representative for Council Negeri was also a deputy minister, deputy chief minister. This is the one I replace now. Yeah. So I guess he is also equally passionate to see that all this infrastructure to be placed because that is a prerequisite for development. Yeah. And uh, I can see that out of the schools, out of these facilities now, I can see more people are able to take advantage of modern life. Sarawak will be a main exporter of food for Malaysia and for the region, but we cannot just talk about food, tak boleh cakap saja kena makan, I'm stopping uh, Dato and Dato from eating. So we're going to enjoy the local delicacy here. Tetapi, after this, we also need to look at the source of strength for Dato Amma, which is Dato and Amma. <laughs> and maybe the Deputy Chief Minister rules for the state. But to buy groceries, I think Dato and Amma have more power. So let's look at that <laughs> All right, after this break. Masih menonton kami anak Sarawak, inilah terung yang biasa menjadi makanan utama orang Sarawak. Dan sini, Datin Amal boleh ceritakan saya, ini sawi orang sawi, Sarawak ya? Sawi orang Isabi. Sarawak. Isabi. Ha, Isabi. Rasa, Isabi Iban. Rasa macam wasabi. Rasa macam <laughs> okay. wasabi, okey. Terima kasih banyak okay. Datin Amal kami kacau okay. untuk membeli belah ini. Okay. Sementara Datin Amal pergi meninjau, inilah kelebihan bila Datuk Amal pulang ke Sarawak selepas lama berkhidmat di Putrajaya Datuk Amar saya nampak ini ada beras bario yeah. nanti Dia depan beras kampung beras kampung ha, kampung ni tu ada di Pedawan oh Pedawan ha, Pedawan ada banyak bedayu no bedayu ha, nak oh kawasan bedayu tu tanam lampu ke saya kakak oh kakak Oh, madu lebah. Ah, yang bukan kelulut. Bukan, bukan. Ha? Ah, kelulut madu lain. Okay. Datuk Amal, kalau di Kuala Lumpur dulu, sukar nak mencari midin, beras oh, bario atau kampung? Memang. Bario mungkin ada dalam sebuah market. Ah. Tapi, beras macam ini susah. Susah. Jadi, Even you go to Chokit, susah. Okay. susah. Jadi, bila pulang ke Sarawak, selepas lama berkhidmat di Putrajaya, apa perbezaan, kerana makanan semua pun berbeza, Tentunya uh, politik juga berbeza. Jadi bagaimana uh, situasi meng, apa ni, menserasikan kembali, adjusting. How do you adjust back to life in Sarawak after you make that comeback? Sebenarnya apabila saya di Kuala Lumpur, saya pun banyak berhemat untuk Sarawak. Kerana kita adalah satu negara. Uh, tapi yang apabila saya balik, saya dihaskan sebagai jaga Sarawak. Jadi ada perbezaan dari segi keluasan pasan yang dijaga okay. tetapi dari segi uh, pesapah uh, bekerja memang sama. Kita 
fokus kepada to deliver uh, the service to assist the people. Okay. Itu yang cukup penting. So that's why now I told my ministry people we must be outcome based management. Okay. Kita mesti ada satu matlamat dan dah tak tahu matlamat tu baru kita rancang bagaimana nak. Okay. That's, that's what I learn from Kuala Lumpur because they over there uh, this pemandu is helping us. So the experience yang saya dapat di sana memang membantu. Membantu dari segi bagaimana nak mengatasi masalah yang mungkin lebih rumit, lebih kompleks uh, dan bagaimana apakah isu-isu perlu kita selesaikan sebelum satu dasar diputuskan dan uh, it give you a little bit of wisdom so when i come back i feel a lot easier with my experience there and also my rapport with them even though now the different set of ministers are in the cabinet but a lot of them were in parliament so we know each, each other, other very well So pada pendapat Dato' Amma, keadaan menjadi semakin baik, things are improving better and better, politically and also governance-wise, because yang amat berhormat Tun Mahathir juga memberi kepercayaan kepada Dato' Amma untuk memimpin uh, satu kombinasi ya, di antara ya, ya, YB ya. Barubian dan uh, Dato' ya, Amma. Beliau melantik saya sebagai pengurusi bersama untuk majlis tindakan negeri uh, dengan Barubian. Ini satu penghormatan kepada Sarawak dan ini juga mencerminkan betapa rapat eh, Kuala Lumpur dengan Kuching uh, tidak seperti yang di dipikirkan orang tapi that is a solid example of how you know KL dan Kuching uh, kematangan berpolitik uh, juga kematangan dan dapat bekerjasama demi kepentingan rakyat Datuk Amar kami anak Sarawak tak nak ganggu sangat okay. membeli belah ni dan juga okay, tugas no, no, Datuk Amar okay. kita lepas ni nak ikut Datuk Amar kata nak buat pemeriksaan mengejut uh, spot check Rampangi, yes. ha, in Rampangi but the, before that we go and makan laksa ok boleh so you got everything uh, yeah, Datuk yeah. ini yeah. untuk bambu bambu untuk okay. ayam panso oh ayam panso <laughs> dalam ni ok ok <laughs> ayam, ayam panso ikan panso ikan panso pun boleh nak tahu semua tu kena tunggu ini adalah kami anak Sarawak bersama dengan Datuk Amal Douglas. Okey. Kami anak Sarawak masih lagi berada di sini, di Kuching, di Sarawak. Anda tak nampak di belakang kamera itu adalah Gunung Santubung. Tapi di sini adalah Taman Kekal. Pengeluaran makanan. Hmm, pengeluaran Santubung. makanan TKPM uh, Santubung. Kerana di sini uh, hasil kerjasama di antara Kerajaan Kesetuan dan Negeri untuk melaksanakan pertanian berteknologi tinggi. Dato' Omar dah kata, satu cara untuk merapatkan jurang di antara kawasan luar bandar dengan bandar from rural to the urban is food production with agrotechnology. Uh, jadi Datuk Amar di sini kita boleh lihat Datuk Amar ni saya sebenarnya kacau ganggu Datuk Amar yang buat pemeriksaan mengejut spot check. Apa yang sedang diperiksa? What are you spot checking on? <laughs> ini Taman Kekal Pengeluaran Makanan di Rempang inilah satu uh, tempat yang akan dijadikan role model untuk precision farming. Uh, kita di sini akan menggunakan fertigation system dan sekarang kita sedang membangunkan internet of things uh, supaya kita dapat uh, segala-gala data mengenai bagaimana sesuatu jenis tanaman dapat kita bangunkan. Seperti saya sebut tadi, untuk Sarawak dapat menjadi net exporter of makanan ke luar negara, kita kena dapat bersaing. Kita kena tentukan nombor satu produk kita bersama dengan kualitinya bersama dengan kualiti di keluar di di keluarkan negara-negara lain. Nombor dua harga kita mesti juga dapat persaingan. Kalau tu if it is too expensive, nobody will buy. Uh, so that mean we will continue research uh, to get the best variety to make sure that uh, the productivity tinggi, kos dia pun dapat kawal. You see, the problem we face are the workers. Yeah. 
Jadi dengan menggunakan vertikasi ini, macam tempat ini yang ada 1,500 pokok cili tadi, ia dapat dijaga oleh satu orang. Malah dua tempat ini pun dapat dijaga satu orang kerana ada satu tempat uh, untuk membekalkan baja dengan air. Uh, so this is what we want to showcase because this is also have attracted a number of professional engineers, accountants, a number of young people because very trendy. Uh, once our system IoT cannot set up, all they got to do just use the handphone, mm-hmm. uh, and then with the big data that we collect from here, then we can help to guide them. Uh, so this is a direction where we want to develop our agriculture uh, industry in Sarawak, and uh, this will be replicated di tempat-tempat yang lain. Datuk Amar, kerana Datuk Amar ada kepakaran dua-dua, Semenanjung dan Sarawak. Saya tanya soalan ni. Di Semenanjung juga banyak lakukan. Felda, Fekron, syarikat besar masuk. Yang kita pun beli di uh, saham, pasaran saham London, jadikan milik Malaysia. Tetapi, bila dikhususkan dalam bentuk syarikat, rakyat yang di bawah ni terpaksa bergantung pada banyak lapisan. Tapi kalau rumah panjang itu, yang sekarang saya lihat memang dah pelbagai. Semakin pelbagai. Uh, gawai raya disambut dalam satu rumah panjang Situlah ada Muslim, situlah ada Katolik, uh, situlah ada Anglican Dan Anemisma pun masih ada Jadi adakah akan diberikan dalam bentuk itu Diupayakan setiap rumah panjang Sekitar uh, penghak upayaan ekonomi You know, you empower based yes, yes, on yes, the yes. know-how there. Kita ada beberapa pendekatan Satu, kita juga uh, mengikut bagaimana nak dibuat di Semenanjung Velcra, di sini ada Sakra hmm. Sakra is in situ development tanah-tanah orang kampung tanah adat akan dibangunkan dan keuntungannya akan dibagi. Yang kedua ada joint venture between syarikat dengan orang kampung. Uh, that is also the model we having now. Uh, but now we are encouraging more of empowering orang kampung sendiri yeah. untuk membangunkannya. Uh, kerana dengan cara itu mungkin dia dapat Uh, pendapatan boleh kata lebih yeah. uh, but of course the problem is kebanyakan orang kampung orang tua-tua yeah. uh, so that's where this modern technology boleh membantu jalan keluar. Uh, yeah. yang di jalan keluar yeah. and then uh, the most important thing yang kita nak buat sekarang adalah untuk menentukan ada satu one model yeah. that can resolve the supply chain yeah. because orang petani boleh tanam yeah. tapi tak ada Jualannya. market uh, yeah. so we have this uh, top fruit who are doing role model for okay. anchor company for our durian mm-hmm. uh, they know they have 30 years experience in planting okay. they have a factory recognized by 11 countries okay. and they have market okay. uh, this year they have export about 100 ton of our durian paste okay. uh, with that our philosophy come in to say that apa yang ditanam oleh pekebun-pekebun akan dibeli dan akan boleh beri pendapatan okay. kepada Ya, ada pasaran dan ada peranan kerajaan. Ya, ya, ya. Menuju ke hujung, uh, Datuk Amar, bagus kita meningkatkan kemakmuran. Tapi nilai tradisi masyarakat, kepelbagaian, menghormati satu sama lain, tak kira agama, malah kalau pun pentadbiran uh, diterajui oleh satu kaum dan sebagainya, tapi masih membuka ruang kepada kepelbagaian. Jadi saya rasa Sarawak yang paling pelbagai di Malaysia, uh, apa yang pandangan Datuk Amar? Untuk kita tutup pembincangan ini, yang Sarawak pasti perlu teruskan dan mungkin segarkan lagi, bukan saja untuk Sarawak tapi untuk seluruh Malaysia. Kerana ini era seluruh dunia mahu persahabatan, mahu kepelbagaian dan bukan persengketaan. Bagi Sarawak kita di sini uh, satu um, very distinct character that we have is the level of both the racial and religious harmony. I mean, you've been saying it just now, Raya, Gawai, eh? kita celebrate yang sama. Uh, you go to rural areas, kedai kopi, orang Islam, dengan makan Islam, duduk, makan bersama. And uh, now, uh, even religion also is so wine. I think that is one of the heaviest responsibility of the government today. To ensure that that spirit of unity, harmony is to be nurtured and to be developed to a level later on walaupun sekarang dunia tanpa sampadan mm-hmm. anasir-anasir boleh datang dari luar dalam sekelip mata berbagai cara, ya. atau berbagai cara. tetapi oleh kerana due to the resilience of mm-hmm. the community 
Uh, they, we want them to understand how do we get development to where we are today because we are united, we don't quarrel, we put all our effort together to build unity, to find out where to move, to better our life. Mm -hmm. So inilah satu tanggungjawab yang cukup berat yang kadang-kadang susah nak di uh, usahakan kerana pelbagai cabaran. Okay. Uh, but I'm confident kalau semua pihak memahami ini uh, bahawa whatever your political interest, whatever your business interest, never sacrifice the harmony, okay. both racial and religious harmony yang kita ada. Itu bukan saja mesej untuk Sarawak tapi mesej untuk seluruh Malaysia, Sarawak maju, Malaysia juga terus yes. maju. Terima kasih banyak. Okay, okay, okay. Saya berjaya menumpang yeah. hari Minggu uh, Datuk Amal bersama dengan Datin. Datin dah masak banyak ayam pansoh lah, midin pun mungkin ada. Jadi kita perlu lepaskan Datuk Amal. Terima kasih sekali okay. lagi. Terima kasih kepada anda menonton. Ini adalah kami anak Sarawak eksklusif untuk Sarawak tetapi pengajarannya bagi seluruh rakyat Malaysia di Astro Awani. Jumpa lagi. Okay, terima kasih.